Okay, let's get started by creating a new Google Analytics for account and property for our website. So if you go to google.com slash analytics, if you go to that page, it will bring you to this page right here. So if you already have an existing Google account, what you can do is just click on get started today and that's going to allow you to get started with Google Analytics 4 or you can sign into Google Analytics 4 if you already have a profile set up. Now I do already have a property set up so for me it might look a little bit different than it looks for you. When you click on get started today, what you are likely going to see is a page that looks like this one right here. Now if you already have an existing Google Analytics 4 profile, if we just go back really quick, I click on exit. Then what you're going to do is you're going to go to the admin section of your existing Google Analytics 4 account. And through the admin section, what you can do is click on create account. So when you create an account, it's going to look just like this. So I'm going to set up a new account for my website. And so the very first thing is naming our new account. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do brickpop.com for my account name. Now we're going to scroll down here, account data and sharing settings. So this just depends on the options you want to give over sharing your Google Analytics data. Um, I generally just share everything, but we'll click on next now. Okay, next we're going to create a property. So our property name could be exactly the same as our account name, and I'll show you why that matters in a minute. Um, it doesn't need to be exactly the same, and you can create separate properties for different websites, or if you have an iOS app, or if you have an Android app. So in this case, we're doing this for brickpop.com, our website. So we're going to name our property the same as our account, and then our reporting time zone, you just want to set for your local time zone. So for me, I am currently in New York time. So that's where my local time zone is. Currency will be US dollar. You don't need to worry about advanced options because universal analytics properties are no longer collecting data. So we're gonna click on next here and next is going to be describing your business. So now what you need to do is select your industry category. So for mine, it's going to be hobbies and leisure and then your business side size as far as how many employees your business has. So for mine, it's just going to be small and we're gonna click on next. So next you wanna choose your business objectives. So generally what I recommend doing here when you're choosing your business objectives is just clicking on get baseline reports. So just get started by clicking get baseline reports. You don't need to add all of these other options here. We're just gonna click this one at the bottom and click on create. So now the Google Analytics terms of service agreement, we need to make sure we accept the uh, data processing terms here as required by the GDPR and additional terms applic applicable to data shared with Google, I accept also need to accept the measurement controller controller data protection term so accept that as well make sure we accept all of our terms and now we want to start collecting data so it's really that simple to actually set up your Google Analytics 4 property so what we can do now is we're going to choose a platform we're going to choose web here obviously if you're setting up an Android app or an iOS app you would choose a different platform but for the most part most people are choosing web for their website when you set that up for the first time so next we're gonna set our website URL, so HTTPS, and ours is brickpop.com. Stream name, we can name, again, the same exact thing as our other ones. So we have brickpop.com for our stream, for our property, for our account. Enhanced measurement, you wanna make sure you enable enhanced measurement here. So this is gonna show that it's already gonna be measuring page views, scrolls, outbound clicks, site search, video engagement, file downloads, and form interactions. So you might as well measure all of these, even if you're not planning on having any file downloads or forms on your website, there's really no downside to using enhanced measurement and make sure you're measuring everything right when you set up your stream. So when we set up this, it's called a stream. So this is called our web stream. So it's a little bit different terminology than previously, but at this point we are ready to install Google Analytics 4. So our property is completely set up. So instead of installing it right this second, we're gonna click on the X, we're gonna click on the X again, and what we're going to do is we're just going to come back over here to, or if we come over here to next, and we're going to continue to home. And what we want, I just want to show you accessing your account. So in your Google Analytics 4 account, so I set this one up just as an example. This is the one I'm currently using. Probably going to end up switching over to this one. You'll actually see the old Universal Analytics property here. Um, but this is our current run right here. So you're going to see Analytics accounts, and then this is our properties and our apps. So brickpop.com, we know it's a web stream because obviously we have the .com there. So now what we need to do is actually install Google Analytics 4. Okay, today I'm gonna to show you how to install Google Analytics 4 on your WordPress website using the Google Site Kit plugin. So there's different ways to install Google Analytics 4 on your website, but this is one way to do it for WordPress. So once you have your Google Analytics 4 account all set up, what we wanna do is we wanna come over here to data streams. So we're in the admin section of our Google Analytics 4 account. So you wanna to go to the correct account, 
the correct property here and under admin so at the bottom left corner then we're going to click on data streams so through data streams you're going to see our web data stream that we've created here we're going to click on the arrow to the right hand side to see our web stream details now one thing if we scroll all the way to the bottom you're going to see view tag instructions so if we click on view tag instructions this will give us installation instructions for our website so it's going to already detect that our website has wordpress installed it's going to say choose a plugin below so there's a few different plugins that you can use if you click on choose another there's a lot of different plugins that can help you install google analytics for i'm going to be using the site kit plugin today so we're going to install google analytics for using this and it will actually end up installing google search console but it's not really what this video is about so i'm just going to show you um, but what we want to do is you can click on site kit plugin right here i have my wordpress website open i'm in the dashboard of my wordpress website so instead of clicking on site kit plugin let's just go to plugins and click on add new so under keyword here all we're going to enter is google site kit okay and when you do that search here you're going to see site kit by google this is the plugin that we want so what we're going to do is we're going to install this plugin and then we're going to activate this plugin okay so we're going to see congratulations the site kit plugin is now activated so i've had this installed on my website before so mine may be set up already if it is i will show you how to unset it up so let's go to our dashboard for our site kit plugin okay so mine is already set up since i've done this before so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to settings so this is actually a good lesson anyway so if we come over to settings go to admin settings over here and what we can do is we can reset site kit through the admin settings so if you want to change your tracking at all if you want to get back to the beginning of site kit we can always do this so this is probably what yours is going to look like when you first set it up set up site kit so what we want to do is connect google analytics as part of our setup so if we click on connect google analytics what we could do is scroll down here and click on sign in with google this if you select will share anonymous usage data really up to you if you want to share usage data i don't have a problem with this website for some websites you may not want to do that click on sign in with Google here and it's going to open up the option to sign in with our Google account now my Google Analytics 4 is obviously installed on this Google account I will be signing into so make sure you're using the correct Google account coming back over here this is the account I have that I want to continue with SiteKit. so let's select our account now it's saying we already have seven services that we've given access to so you're going to have to grant access to Google and it's going to give you the option to show all of these different services here so it's going to say see and download your Google Analytics data, view your Google Tag Manager container and its subcomponents, view and manage Search Console data for verified sites. So since I actually have Tag Manager installed, um, I think I have Google Search Console installed as well through that. So um, if we click on Done, it may automatically pull in my Google Search Console, but I really just want to focus on Google Analytics 4 for this video anyway. So make sure you give SiteKit access to all of those different services and click on Continue okay so this is showing you're already verified google detected that you're already a verified owner for brick pop so obviously i own the entire google analytics 4 profile the entire property the entire account so i am an owner of brick pop click on next it's going to say brick pop can access google account data you already have given permission to your site to display metrics in the site kit dashboard now you may have to grant additional access here at this point so if you haven't then make sure you're granting access but we granted all the access in the previous step BrickPop already added to Google Search Console, so we'll be able to see how people can find a site in, on search in our SiteKit dashboard. I will show you that. Click on Next again, and now it's going to say Set Up Google Analytics. So let's click on Next one more time. Okay, so it's connecting our analytics service right now. And now what you want to do is make sure you're selecting the right property and web data stream for your website. So I recently set mine up as this BrickPop account and this property and this web data stream, but I actually want to switch. So I want to use my brickpop.com account that I just recently created. Then we want to select the property. I only have one property through there and we want to select the web data stream. Now, one thing you should do is you should check the property ID and your web data stream just to make sure that you're installing the correct Google Analytics 4 profile. So if we click on the X here and through your admin section, just go over this really quick again, through your admin section, first and foremost, if you go to property settings here, you're going to see property ID. So 403, 153. Coming back over to the SiteKit plugin, 403.153.418, so that matches our property ID. So now, still within the admin section, go to data streams one more time. Click on the arrow here for data streams, and just make sure you have the correct measurement ID. So GD2Y88, so coming over, GD2Y88C8. So this is all correct, we're going to click on configure analytics. Okay, so it's saying congrats on completing the setup for analytics, so okay, got it. 
Analytics is gathering data. It can take up to 72 hours before stats show up for your site. Since this is a brand new install, it's not going to pull in any existing statistics because I don't have any yet. So we can click on OK, got that here. So this will start gathering data and it's going to show us more information about our traffic data from Google Analytics 4. So you're going to see Google Analytics 4 view here. Scroll down. This is going to be our Google Search Console data. So it's showing our total clicks, total impressions over the last 28 days. Obviously, we're seeing some good growth because this is a brand new website that wasn't getting any clicks or impressions really until I started working on it. So if we scroll down here, you can see this data here as well. So the other thing, see how your content is doing. Keep track of your most popular pages, how people found them from search. So the top search queries for my site. So this is all really helpful and it's going to help us to basically come up with new pieces of content, content we should update and keywords that we're already ranking pretty well for. So this is all useful. The other thing is you can click on speed here and it's going to show us some page speed insights. Keep track of how fast your pages are, get specific recommendations on what to improve. So we have all of this information in here. The last thing I want to show you is if we go to settings for our site kit, you just want to make sure because if you had a universal analytics profile, if you click on analytics here, just make sure that you're just using your Google Analytics 4 profile. So if we click on edit really quick, few things, it's going to say display metrics from Google Analytics 4 in the dashboard, select that yes. Google Analytics 4 here, now you may have one where it also installed Google Universal Analytics. So just click here to not place that code on your website. You don't want Universal Analytics code on your website. No real reason for it and no real reason for it anymore. So. We didn't change anything, so we're just going to click on cancel. We have this all set up. We have SiteKit is monitoring our traffic. So if you come over to Google Analytics here, what we can do is just come back here, click on home. Since we're on our home page right here, we should be registering. So users in the last 30 minutes. So it's showing that people have been on the website over the last 30 minutes. Data collection is active, so we're all set up. So if you have any questions about installing Google Analytics 4 using the Google SiteKit WordPress plugin, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today and make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.